Welcome to worship. Thanks for tuning in. Welcome to worship from wherever you are. If you're here in the Red Wing community or somewhere else, we are so glad you have chosen to join us today. Uh, during today's service, we are going to celebrate the class of 2020. So many of our speakers are our high school seniors, along with some of our teachers. Um, so thank you for joining us for worship. Hello, everyone. I have been asked to share a recent God moment with you all. There have, of course, been many, but the one that stands out to me is the thoughtful gifts my family and I received this May Day. It was very touching to receive messages from neighbors and friends that we have not been able to see. These small acts of kindness and thoughtfulness were a much needed pick me up during this quarantine. Now more than ever, it is very important to be able to find God's love through small but meaningful gestures. Peace be with you. A God moment in high school for me is right now. Everyone's coming together and supporting one another in these tough times. It's really easy to see the kindness of God in everyone's small acts, whether it be making masks for hospital workers or everything that's being done for the high school seniors. It's really nice to see the community coming together and spreading God's love. Hi everybody, for today's children's message, I have a little project for you to work on. Uh, maybe you can do it today when you're done watching worship or sometime this week. So during this time of our stay at home, people have had times and things to celebrate. Um, so if you know someone who's had something to celebrate, maybe a high school graduation, college graduation, a birthday, a wedding anniversary, the birth of a child, whatever, I invite you to grab a piece of paper and your favorite writing utensil and draw a picture or write a card or something to just uh, send to someone you know to help maybe put a smile on this, their face um, because everyone needs that during this time. Um, and if you don't have someone in mind, if you want to draw a picture or send your card to the church and then we'll mail it off to somebody we know who could use it. Thanks. Peace, Peace be, be with, with you. you. Peace, Peace be, be with, with you. you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace, Peace be, be with you.
Timothy 4.12 says, Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. So today's story makes two points, and I know for some of you who are accustomed to coming to worship at United Lutheran, you're thinking, Pastor Justin, all of your sermons make three points, and, I, and, and generally they do, but in the digital age, we realize we need to probably keep things a little bit shorter. So today you get, you get two points. The story comes from the sixth chapter of John's Gospel. Jesus has been preaching and teaching and healing. And as a result, the crowds that are following him, wanting to hear and to experience his grace, they're growing more and more. So in the Gospel of John, at one point, Jesus says, okay, it's time to take a break, and so he jumps on a boat along with the disciples, and they, and they sail down to the just a little ways away from the crowd. They get out. This is a, a supposed to be an opportunity for the disciples to, to learn privately from Jesus, for them to go into some more uh, teachings in a, in a more in-depth manner, when all of a sudden the crowd shows up. They watch Jesus get out of the boat, and they, they want more. They want more teaching. They want more preaching. They want more healing. And you can see the look on the faces of the disciples. Peter, James, John, Andrew, they're all wondering, how, how many? How, how many people are going to show up? How much more are we supposed to give to them? They want their own time with Jesus. I imagine the disciples are trying to figure out who's supposed to tell Jesus this. And so they begin to play rock, paper, scissors. And of course, somebody loses because he chooses scissors and, and, and Peter's always going to choose the rock. And so it's, it's Philip who has to go to Jesus on behalf of the disciples. And Philip says, uh, Jesus, there's too many people here. Where are they supposed to eat? Uh, we don't have enough food for these people. And, and of course, this is a real problem. If you've ever stood before a, a hungry group of people and you've tried to speak to them, it's, it can get awful. I mean, I've seen senior citizens diving under pews to grab leftover Cheerios and wrestling them away from toddlers. I mean, it's, it gets rough. This is a serious issue. But, but for the disciples, this means it's over. Send the, send the crowd away, Jesus. That's what Philip is saying. So after Philip speaks, Andrew stands up. The crowd is close and Andrew looks at this little boy, this little boy who's, who's bringing what he has to Jesus to share with Jesus and the disciples and who knows who else. 
it's it's five loaves of bread and two fish and andrew says yeah see there's five loaves of bread and two fish from this little boy but what are they when there's so many send them away jesus you see for the disciples they are abundantly aware that they do not have enough they do not have enough food to offer the crowd they do not have enough resources that even if there was a bakery around they couldn't buy lunch for everyone they are abundantly aware of how they do not have enough and so for the disciples that means that's the end we don't have enough so send them away jesus in fact the only one in the story who thinks he has enough is this little boy those five loaves of bread and those two fish for him they are enough now oftentimes we think about how foolish this little boy is because clearly these five loaves of bread and two fish are not enough to feed the entire crowd we almost laugh like the disciples thinking oh this little boy thinks that would be enough isn't that sweet and yet i don't think that's the right interpretation i don't think the boy looks at what he has to offer and thinks it's going to be enough to feed the crowd but for this little boy as he looks around at the situation of people who are hungry, he simply is going to do what he can do. More than that, he does what he does, what he gives what he can give, and he brings that to Jesus. Whether it's time, whether it's talent, whether it's treasure, he gives what he has to give, he presents it to Jesus, and he trusts Jesus to do something extraordinary with it. And Jesus looks at the disciples who are saying, Jesus, it's not enough. And Jesus says, it is for me. Jesus takes the loaves of bread. He takes the fish. He has the disciples make the crowd sit down. He blesses the bread. He breaks it. And next thing you know, he comes and he calls all the disciples up. Philip and Andrew, James and John, all of the rest. And he says, I want you to take a little bread and a little fish to each of the people in the crowd. You take this section, you take this section. And then they go and they do this, and then they come back. And Jesus gives them a little bit more, a little bit more. And the disciples become waiters, going out over and over again, delivering food, delivering bread, delivering fish. And the food just continues to multiply. And at the end, after the disciples are no doubt amazed at what has just transpired, Jesus says, we're not finished just yet. He gives them each a basket. He says, go pick up the leftovers, five loaves of bread, two fish, an incredible large crowd. Clearly there can't be leftovers. And yet when the disciples go out, they fill up their baskets. And when the story concludes, there are 12 baskets full of food after they have fed 5,000 people. The point of the story is this, two points for you. First, on this day when we celebrate graduating seniors, we have to unlearn a lie the church has been telling ourselves for years. And that is this, that the church, that the young people are our future. You've heard the expression before, we gotta take care of our young people because they're the future of the church. Actually, it's not true. Young people are an important part of the church today. Young people, we need you not to grow up, become mature, become more like us, and so you can move in and take over the spots we have as we get tired. Young people, we need you to be yourself today. We need you to bring that sense of optimism that that little boy brought. Like Philip, like Andrew, some of us become accustomed to looking around at the world and saying, I don't have enough. I don't have enough we don't have enough to make a difference in this situation so we have to send them away send the problems away we can't address them but there's that little boy who's optimistic and hopeful enough to believe that while he can't solve all the world's problems he can do his part young people we need you to remind us of that spirit of optimism that spirit of hope that you naturally bring the church needs you to do that. That's the first lesson. The second lesson is this. Notice what happens when Jesus receives something small. When this little boy offers what he has to offer, Jesus takes it and does something extraordinary with it. I see this happening in our midst of our current situation in a variety of ways, but I want to tell you just one story. 
we could focus right now and as, as young people cannot go to school and they're learning online and frankly for some kids that's going exceedingly well and for other kids that they're struggling we could focus on all the negativity around that and i know there if i were a teacher right now there would be a temptation for me to to wallow and to think huh i can't do the things i want to do i can't do the things that i was prepared to do and yet i noticed some teachers this week who did the exact opposite they went and they formed a, a little parade and they drove out from our around our community in Red Wing and students came out and their parents, some of their parents came out and they watched these teachers go by. Decorated cars, teachers waving, honking their horns, uh, stopping and chatting with the students. Now that's a, that's a small thing, right? We think about in the big picture, is that teaching kids how to read? Is that teaching kids how to do math? No. But in that moment, those teachers were doing their part. They were doing what they could. And here's what's remarkable, is how God took that one little offering and is doing something extraordinary with it. I looked at my own wife, who had tears in her eyes. And then I realized I had the same tears. What, what was that about? As our daughter waved at these teachers who care about her, it was a realization that in the midst of this situation, that, that we have a host of people who care about the people, the little ones that we, that we love and cherish, that we're not alone in this. That, that in addition to family members and dear friends, that my children have other adults in their lives who care deeply about them. What's even better is yesterday I was talking with another family about this experience and they broke down again tears began to roll down the father's eyes they're going through some difficult times right now with the whole learning from home and just the just just the image of those teachers driving by expressing how they felt to this how that sustained this family yesterday how it how it changed their outlook on everything again this is just one example. We, we have hundreds of examples. You, you, you hear about police officers and firefighters showing up to celebrate kids' birthdays. You, feel, you hear about the stories in our local community of, of people buying graduation cakes for, for graduating seniors. There's a thousand of these stories, but they all are the same in this regard, that one person or a small group of people look at a situation and know they can't solve it they can't make it better what do they do they do their part they do this much and what does god do god takes this much and does something extraordinary with it people of god it would be so easy to become dismayed this day to look at our situation and say what can we do with the challenges we face but instead we are invited by this little boy to do what we can do to give this much to make this much of an effort and trust that Jesus will do something extraordinary with it because that's what Jesus has been doing for 2,000 years. Thanks be to God. Amen. It's difficult to pinpoint my favorite church memory when United Lutheran has had such a presence in my life. Every memory is significant in its own way. Some of my first memories came from Sunday school and the annual Christmas pageants. We would sit in the sanctuary learning about the different ways to say God's name. In a pageant, I was a shy little angel who jumped out and scared the tough little shepherds. The first communion rituals of painting my very own chalice, baking the unleavened bread, and preparing myself for the sacrament. Pain stretching from my heart and tears rolling down my face while celebrating the life of my grandpa showing up every Wednesday for an informal service, working towards my confirmation, talking with my friends as they process their own faith journeys, singing in church alone for the first time, finding my place walking alongside God with my role models right beside me, loving the world as it teaches me wonder, hope, and faith, thanking United Lutheran Church as it is, as it is my second family. As we celebrate with our graduating seniors and their families this milestone in their lives, uh, I invite you to, to join me for a word of prayer. Gracious God, we ask for your blessing upon each and every one of the graduating seniors in this community and beyond. May each one know your presence in their lives and find ways to use their abilities for your glory. 
May they continue to live lives of curiosity and discovery, of dedication and discipline, of compassion and generosity, and in doing so bring great blessings to their communities, to the world, and to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hi everyone, once again I want to say thank you for your generous support of United Lutheran Church. Uh, from a financial standpoint anyway, we had something very significant happen this week in the life of our congregation. Uh, for those of you who aren't aware, we embarked on a building project some time ago. We anticipated after that uh, the construction was done, our construction loan would move into a mortgage. That mortgage would be about a $900,000 mortgage, and of course we would have a monthly payment based on $900,000. Thankfully, uh, because of the generous giving of people in our congregation, that number is significantly lower. Instead of a $900,000 mortgage, our payments are going to be based on $625,000 mortgage. So once again, just want to say thank you so much for your support of United Lutheran Church. If you'd like to give, there's three different ways. I'll scoot to the side so it gets on the screen, but you can give to text to give There's our website, or you can simply mail at the church offering, uh, mail to the church address. But once again, thank you for being so generous. Have a great day. Bye-bye. I'd like to pray for families during these trying times that are facing challenges financially, emotionally, and socially. Please grant everyone patience and hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear God, thank you to all the people who are working in the hospitals to keep us safe. Thank you to teachers and other school staff members for helping all of their students out. We really appreciate you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all the teachers and community members that are helping to make the end of senior year great, even during this difficult time. We also pray for the families that don't get to see each other with all this going on. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to join along with teachers from the Red Wing Community Schools as we sing, Go, My Children, With My Blessing. bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.